we know the classifications of small businesses from startup to emerging on to scale up. And for many of us founders, we desperately want to advance through these stages onto the next level, mid-sized business, and for some to grow beyond that to a large enterprise employing thousands of people. Hi, I'm Alicia Butler-Pierre. Not only is business infrastructure vital to advancing through those stages, but so is capital. As a startup, you need it to up the ante on your sales and marketing activities. But as an emerging business, you need it to hire more full-time staff and invest in new or upgrade existing equipment and technologies. Speaking of technologies, you're about to discover a revolutionary fintech product that's changing the game on giving small businesses access to credit. The company behind it is on a mission to level the playing field so that more small businesses have a fair shake at sustainable growth. Sadly, there's a large swath of entrepreneurs who, although they have a high demand product or service, they simply can't scale their businesses because they've been unjustly cut off from funding. It's time to change that. After all, it takes money to make money. This is season 14, episode 175. Let's start the show. Welcome to Business Infrastructure. The podcast about curing back office blues of fast growing businesses. If you're a business owner or operator looking for practical tips and solutions to scaling your business in a sustainable manner, you're in the right place. Now, here's your hostess, Alicia Butler Pierre. Having a tough time trying to explain ideas over a video conference? Try the Think Smart whiteboard. It's the fastest whiteboard software in the world and allows you to upload flowcharts and write on them while your colleagues are watching remotely. Call us today for a free demo. The number is 1-866-584-6804 or visit us online at getmytablet.com. Now that's smart. Think smart. This episode is brought to you by Equilibria Incorporated, the company behind this podcast, where we design business infrastructure for fast-growing small businesses ready to scale. If you've been listening to the show for a while, then you know this season we're focusing on game-changing technology. And so far, we've explored technologies to improve operations, business development, marketing, and HR, just to name a few areas of business. And today, we're going to learn about a fintech product. Joining us today in Columbia, Missouri is Amber Fahrenbacher. Amber is the marketing director at Tilful, a technology designed to offer a smarter, more inclusive approach to business credit, scoring, and financial literacy for small and medium-sized businesses. Amber, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much, Alicia. I appreciate you having me. And, you know, Amber, I, it's always fun for me when I can share how I meet people like yourself. And it all started with a tweet. <laughs> it did. It did. I love Twitter. <laughs> it did. So it was great I, to hear from you on there. Yes. I have a Google alert set up for any topics that are out there around small business, scaling, operations, processes, streamlining, automation. And so I came across an article about Tilful and I tweeted about it and Amber saw that and retweeted it. And I, I saw who she was and the fact that she works at, at Tilful. And I was like, huh, she would be a great addition to the podcast, especially this season, because we're focusing on technology. And as I started to look up more information about you, Amber, I was like, wow, she has such a fascinating background because you have a degree in journalism, right? I do. Uh huh. Yeah. A magazine journalism, actually. Uh, yeah. At a, a very strange time to get a journalism degree. I graduated in 2009, which would be right after the, the entire, you know, um, the housing crisis and the recession kind of kicked off. So. Yeah. When the bottom <laughs> fell out, right? When the bottom fell out. Exactly. But it, it worked out well. It worked out okay. So And I noticed that, so after you graduated, it looks, or maybe during the time you were still in school, is is that when you had your internship at Elle Magazine? 
Yeah. So I, I was in New York. I landed an editorial internship with Elle magazine and then actually had the, the opportunity there. And it kind of kicked off my career in, in the digital space because my editor and my intern supervisor at the time, you know, asked me if I would prefer to work on the print side or on the, you know, the dot com side. And she really advised me to go dot com. And I'll, I'll never forget that because that was, a, I, you know, I was, I was doing HTML tags um, that summer back in 2008. And so it served me very well. I was wondering about that. I was like, I wonder if that was kind of her introduction to digital and content marketing. And it sounds like it yeah. was. So, <laughs> it definitely was. So, so you, you obviously chose the dot com side. So can you kind of walk us through how you were able to transition from being a writer or, you know, a journalist, magazine journalism, mm-hmm. as you, as you said, specifically into eventually becoming, I noticed at one time you were even a chief marketing officer yeah. at a company and now you're, you're a marketing director. So how on earth were you able to make a career transition <laughs> like that? I will say, you know, as much as I like to be like, you know, it was very, it was very intentional and I had a really clear idea of what I was doing and didn't. Um, but you know, I kind of <laughs> think I, I followed my gut a lot. You know, I think that whenever you graduate, you're kind of taking whatever you can get. And I've never felt like I needed to take whatever I could get and be grateful for it than graduating into like a jobless job market in 2009. So, you know, obviously my, my big goal was to like become a writer. I wanted to eventually write for like maybe Fair or The New Yorker or something like that. And, you know, I still love writing and I think that I actually do a great deal of it still in my my day to day, which makes my parents really happy to think that they, you know, my mom's a nurse and my dad's an engineer. And so they're like, you want to go to journalism school. But um, I, you know, I think that from looking back, my first job was very random and it was actually with a media buying uh, di- display ad network. Um, it was just kind of my first, they said they'd train me and everything. And actually it was a kind of what you'll see anytime you see a display ad on the internet, you know, we, we kind of would work with like different publishers to, to run those ad and advertisers. And like one of our our early advertisers was Netflix. And so Netflix actually was one of our clients that we were working with through their agency of record. So it was, it wasn't like we were working directly with Netflix. So this is whenever they were still doing like DVDs, but we were serving ads on their behalf and, you know, helping grow that business through just like getting people to sign up for free trials. And it was like, whenever pop unders is what they were called, which would be just ads that pop like pop-ups really, but they were like kind of popping behind your browser. And it was a, a great deal of like how we made money. And so we were basically just taking a cut off the, of, off of the, uh, the margin on, on the ad buy. But then I kind of got interested. I started to work more directly with some clients. I started working like directly with the, the people, the marketing in-house um, team at Coca-Cola um, and at Ralph Lauren. And that was really cool because I, I kind of got, I started to realize that I didn't really do, want to do like sales so much. It was very like, basically like really get invested and start to make a relationship with a, a new advertiser client. And then kind of just like abandon that relationship and try to sell, you know, services to another advertiser and prospect. And so with that, I realized that I really liked digging in and, and doing the planning and the executing and the testing. And so I wanted to move in house. And so, you know, I, I got some more exposure from like a, a SEO and, and kind of beyond just display digital marketing and then was able to, to get a pretty great opportunity with a insure tech company called suretybonds.com, which was actually bought up by Houston Casualty Company, which was then bought up by Tokyo Marine. And so they're a pretty big insurer. And so it was like a startup inside of a, a big enterprise company, which was great exposure. And so I was the CMO for that company and it was a startup. I was CMO for the startup inside of, of that, you know, giant conglomeration, but it was great experience to kind of see just two different worlds collide and how an acquisition happens, you know, and, and what that looks like and how they operate together. Cause they really tried to grab us up. They bought the company for the growth opportunity and the digital kind of, you know, you know ability to like create demand online. Mm-hmm. And then was uh, actually my my most recent post was at Equipment Share, which is a YC company. And so, I, you know, whenever I, I went on there, you know, I, for me, I, I knew very much that the title change was not, I don't totally care about titles either. And, you know, the, the CMO title was for a much smaller company. The company was valued closer to like under 10 million. And so the company that I was going to was in the hundreds of millions. And so I said, you know, I, I like to, <laughs> like to be very aware of kind of where I am in the scheme mm-hmm. of things. And so that's a, uh, uh, actually led that company to um, their latest Series D. So we uh, passed that $2.5 billion valuation earlier wow. this year. So yeah, that was some crazy growth. Um, if you want to talk about scale, 
there's lots of tales of scale inside of that company for sure, but it was an awesome experience. And I think I'm still kind of recovering from all that, that crazy growth, but yeah, so now I'm at a FinTech and like you mentioned, Tilful, and we're kind of trying to do it all over again. So I'm excited to see where we can take it again. Early stage is really kind of where I, I like to live. I think it's, it's the most exciting. Um, I think it's where I can add the most value and impact at this point in my career. So yeah, just uh, kind of keeping on, keeping on. So early stage, Tilful, how long has, well, first, what led you to Tilful? Did you know the, the founders? Because it's, it's actually owned by a company called Flowcast, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Correct. So LinkedIn in-mail recruiter actually kind of oh, wow. popped into my, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, if you, I'm sure you know, Lisa, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of weird in the LinkedIn DMs. Like, you know, it can be legitimate. Some things right. can be up until that point. I mean, I haven't, I've seen some opportunities come through that were relatively like, you know, they weren't, they weren't not legitimate, but this recruiter was really good. You know, she just, it spoke very well. I kind of knew that like I was coming up to my four years of equipment share and, you know, I kind of felt like I had done my part there and I was vested and everything like that. So it seemed like a good time to transition, but I wasn't really looking per se for, for a new opportunity, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I met the founder, you know, again, there's always, there's more opportunity. And, and again, kind of just, I, whenever I started with equipment share, I was like the 126th employee. And when I left, it was like, you know, close to 1600 employees. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of growth and yeah, it was kind of just time for, um, you know, a new opportunity. I I really like the brand development. I really like crafting more of that messaging and and creating that brand equity. And I think that that really happens more at the the earlier stages. So can you tell us what is Tilful and at what point, when did it start? And at what point did you get involved in its early stage development? Yeah, absolutely. So Flowcast is is the company. So the company that you know employs me proper is going to be Flowcast, and the and Tilful is a product of Flowcast. If that helps okay. a little bit, but yes, Flowcast uh, actually launched out of Startex, which is uh, connected to to Stanford in terms of it's an accelerator that's got some ties and associations out, and I believe wherever I'm trying to think where Stanford is <laughs> in, California. In, California. In, in California generally, but I, yeah. And so our founder, uh, he went to, um, you know, Berkeley Haas, he's a Berkeley Haas MBA grad and kind of founded the company. It was very much of an AL, a- AI ML company focused on credit risk assessment. And so they launched Flowcast really focused on, you know, the data science aspect of it and really kind of like machine learning and it got, a lot of opportunities with, you know, some really big clients right off the gate, like Hitachi, Nike actually is still one of our clients to this day on the enterprise side. I know, I know it was just starting to get good, right? Well, there's more where that came from. To listen to the full interview, be sure to click the link in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so that you'll know when our next episode drops. Until then, keep operating smoothly. Join us next week for another episode of Business Infrastructure with Alicia Butler-Pierre.